Have you not seen people before that say, I don't do this, but I don't know why I'm doing it? Because favor is on your life. When favor comes, men will break their own laws, break their own principles, break their own wisdom, just to make sure what you are looking for, you get it. How can you ask somebody a question, the person you have not asked, you are willing to give half of your kingdom. What makes you who you are? You want to share and become equal with that person. That's the power of favor. When God wants a man to be impactful, he puts favor on his life. That favor is what gives him encounter, that brings him into inspiration, that makes him stand out. That favor is what empowers him to break protocol and command the allegiance of men. And trust me, you will need the allegiance of men to make impact. Anything that only you can do is not worth it. Go and check. Even Jesus needed men. The son of God, the creator of the world. If there is no synergy, if there is no human support, that thing is too small for God to have time for it. Anything you want to do that is worthwhile must require men from time immemorial. David was anointed king, but the Bible said daily men came to David until his host became like the host of God. So the reason David was mighty was because there was a favor on his life that commanded kings, generals, and warriors. These men loved David so much that they were willing to die for him. David said, I desire to drink water from the well that is in the sepulchre of Rachel. And three soldiers didn't ask him because they know the military intelligence will not grant permission. It's too risky. It is a suicide mission. But in order to please David, this is not part of their purpose. So this is just David's craving. They went out of their way, put their lives in jeopardy, broke through the garrison of the Philistine, went and drew water and fought through that same garrison and brought the water to David. Even David knew that that was suicide and he knew it would be an error to drink it. He said, this is their blood for these men have put their lives in jeopardy. He poured it out as an oblation. You don't need to manipulate people. Find favor. When favor comes on your life, people will die to see you smile. Don't waste your time. See, we are in a different kingdom. Our laws are different. The people in the world can go and read 48 laws of power and manipulate people. We don't manipulate people. We come with a spell called favor. And so people don't know why. They look at you and they just feel that, Kai, you need a car. You didn't complain. They go out of their way, mobilize people, gather money and get a car. See, that's what the people in the world don't understand. They don't know that we are sons of light. They look at you and they say, they are brainwashing people. Do you think you are more intelligent than those who come to our churches? You must be deluded to think so. If we took a sense of here this evening, you'll be shocked. There are military officers here. There are doctors here. There are businessmen here. There are consultants here as we are seated here. If you hear the people who are here, if God doesn't talk through you, you will even be afraid to address them. We have young and we have old. Some persons are over 70 here. If it is experience, they've seen everything. If it is about vibrance, youthfulness, there are people here who are very agile. And to double it, this is the East. Where all wisdom dwell. And then somebody stands up, he carries money and put on the altar. And then you are sitting somewhere, you say they have brainwashed them. Are you not foolish? Are you more qualified than those sitting down? There is something happening. They understand the covenant. As they are doing it, they are buying favor for themselves too. And the reason what you are doing is walking is but there's also favor on your life. It's a transaction. And the Bible said, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. He said, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. When God wants to shift you, he gives you favor. But you must know how to harness it. And this, this short story we read showed us three ways of getting favor. Number one, he said, by waiting on the Lord. Do you see why you don't sprint in the kingdom by running, but by waiting? He said, they that wait upon the Lord, they renew their strength. They mount up with wings like the eagles. He said, when they run, they will not be weary. When they walk, they will not faint. So the way we accelerate in the kingdom is not by running, it's by waiting. Because when you wait, fragrances come upon your life. Esther taught us that. 
He said, go and wait before the Lord for three days. When they waited, she showed us the second thing. She wore her regalia. She didn't show up naked. Many persons, after waiting upon the Lord, they threw away what God has given to them. Listen, there are things God has given you. You have a talent. You have a skill. You have a grace. In the day you require favor, make sure you wear your full garment. Don't come naked. Some persons have waited, but they threw their gifts away. They are trying to use another man's weapon. Esther knew. After waiting, she wore her full apparel. What is your apparel? If it is jokes, in the day when you require favor, make sure you crack your best joke. If it is, if it is dancing, in the day when you require it, make sure you wear your dancing shoes. Don't come without your apparel. Christians don't know this. And that's why Jesus speaking, he said, the children of the world are in their generation wiser than the children of the kingdom. They show up and say, if it will happen, it will happen. There is a protocol. Always make sure you are clothed for the occasion. Esther was clothed. And number three, she was rightly positioned. She didn't run into the court and say, I have favor. She stood where she ought to stand. Don't break protocols. You are not the one to break it. It's God that breaks it. If you come and say, I have favor, and you break protocols, you will attract disfavor to yourself. There are many persons, God gives opportunity for their generation to hear them, and they start insulting their generation. Arrogance comes in. You have missed your place. There are many persons, God gives them favor with great men. They start trivializing it. They say, come to work by 8. It comes by 10. I'm sorry. Ah, After a while, the favor will win. They look at a man who should be their father. But because of favor, he's hugging him and saying, my friend. The next thing he will come. Ah, Oga Alpha. Ah. You will discover that the access you once had, you will lose it. You will cry. You will weep. You will not have it again. Because many corrupt the favor that God has put on their lives. Esther came with favor, but she stood where she, supposed to, she was supposed to stand. It was the king that beckoned her. If you do these three things, the fragrance of favor on your life will be on the increase. And as that favor is growing, you keep breaking protocols. You keep commanding the allegiance of men, including kings. And finally, what favor does is that favor engenders wealth transfer. There are two ways you find wealth transfer in the kingdom. One of them is by favor. In Exodus 12:36. He said, God gave favor to the Israelites and they spoiled the Egyptians. The Egyptians mastered them for more than 400 years. Suddenly something came on their lives. And those who had gold gave gold to them. Those who had money gave money to them. That's why I say favor indeed is a spell. And they took the wealth of Egypt and left with it. You will need a lot of favor if you must prosecute your destiny. And when that favor comes, one of the ways it will show is that resources will gravitate in your direction. Resources. And sometimes, it's even the resources of the Gentiles. It will move it to you. Move it so that you can sponsor. What they hid in darkness, God will bring those treasures of darkness and launch them to your coffers. Because you need to fulfill destiny. I was preaching the other day and I said, Without money, you can't fulfill destiny. Somebody stood up and said, No, Jesus, fulfill destiny with power. <laughs> I looked at him. I said, You are a child. When you wake up, you want, when you grow, you understand. Jesus, fulfill destiny with power. <laughs> so when they went to buy food, they went to buy food with power. <laughs> they all these young people just excited, talking things. I say maybe you have never read Luke chapter 8 verse 2 and 3. Even women were giving money to Jesus. He collected it. <laughs> you say no. He's the son of God. He doesn't need money. Angels will come and do the work. <laughs> Better have enough favor that will bring resources to you. Sir, hear this. If you, best in the house has said anointing without money is annoyance. They say, if you don't get there, you won't know. This conference happening. Very soon, the power of God will move. People will be slain. Curses will break. Healings will take place. You say, yes, God is walking here with power. Sir, there's a generator running for four hours. 
That generator doesn't run on power. It runs on diesel. When people are young, they just want to talk. Somebody will go and write a three ties, trying to counter. Meanwhile, even the pen he's using to write that three ties was bought with money. The laptop is typing on top, is bought with money. It was it, when people are naive. He gave favor to the Israelites, they spoiled the Egyptian. I don't know what God has given to you, but if it is global, sir, you will need money. And in the name of Jesus, the favor you require for the resources to sponsor it to come is released in the name of Jesus. Yeah.